Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 4th of November. India condemns attack on consular camp at Brampton Temple amid rising diplomatic tensions. Rights watchdog slam Pakistan's anti-terrorism bill cites threats to due process. And Iran executes 166 people in October, including 13 Afghan nationals. And now for all the details. India on Monday expressed concern over the safety of Indian national in Canada after a pro Khalistani mob attacked Hindu temple in Brampton on Sunday. The incident occurred at a Hindu Sabha temple where, according to media reports, a group of pro Khalistani supporters waving flags attacked people outside the temple. Attacks were also reported in Vancouver and Surrey over the past weekend. In a statement, the India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhir Jaiswal said New Delhi condemns the act of violence by extremists and separatists at the Hindu Sabha temple and called the Trudeau government to ensure all places of worship are protected from such attacks. Canadian Hindu MP Chandra Arya called the attack a red line and added Khalistani extremists are being given undue freedom in Canada under the guise of freedom of expression. The incident comes amid an ongoing diplomatic standoff between New Delhi and Ottawa. India on this past weekend had lodged a strong protest after Canada linked Home Minister Amit Shah to alleged plots against six separatists on Canadian soil. India's Foreign Ministry also criticised Ottawa for monitoring Indian councillor staff, warning that Canada's unfounded insinuations could have serious consequences for bilateral relations. The first session of the newly elected assembly in Jammu and Kashmir, which convened for the first time in six years on Monday, witnessed a heated exchange with the introduction of a resolution opposing the revocation of Article 370. An uproar erupted in the Jammu and Kashmir assembly when PDP People's Democratic Party leader Wahid Para, representing the Pulwama constituency, introduced a resolution against the revocation of Article 370 and to restore the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. Ruckus broke out in the assembly after BJP demanded that remarks be expunged and the resolution disallowed. While addressing the assembly, Union Territory's Chief Minister Omar Abdullah said that resolution was introduced merely for the cameras and holds no real significance. He added that if there had been a genuine intention behind the resolution, it should have been discussed with the National Conference. हकीकत ये है कि जम्मू कश्मीर के लोगों ने 5 अगस्त 2019 के फैसले पे अपना मोहर नहीं लगाया है। अगर लगाया होता तो नतीजे अलग होते हैं। तो जो जो रेजोल्यूशन आज लाया गया है उसकी उसकी कोई मतलब अहमियत नहीं है। वो मास सेवाएं बदकिस्मती से कैमरास को दिखाने के अलावा उसका और कोई मकसद नहीं है। अगर मकसद होता, तो शायद ये लोग हमारे से मशवरा करके तय करते कि हाउस के तरफ से क्या बात आनी चाहिए। India has heightened security in the valley after recent militant attack and the beginning of the state legislative session. As many as 11 people were injured when militants threw a grenade at Indian security forces on Sunday in a crowded flea market in Srinagar. Kashmir has seen a spate of attacks since a government formed by an opposition alliance took over the territory, where terrorists have fought security forces for decades, resulting in thousands of deaths. Since the formation of new government earlier last month, 15 people have died in different militant attacks in the region. And the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan this past weekend raised concern over the newly introduced anti-terrorism bill, calling it a threat to due process and the right to a fair trial. The Shehbaz Sharif government had tabled the bill in the parliament on Friday, proposing amendments to countries' anti-terrorism laws to grant security forces the power to detain individuals suspected of terrorism and other serious crimes 
for up to three months. In a statement, the rights watchdog acknowledged the urgent need to address the country's deteriorating security situation, but argued that preventive detention is not the solution as such powers are prone to abuse. The commission added that these powers could be misused against political opponents. It also voiced concerns over the authority granted to armed forces to detain individuals based solely on suspicion and without judicial oversight, stating that this effectively legalizes enforced disappearances and intermittent centers, disregarding constitutional protections for due process and fair trial. The HRCP urged the government to withdraw the bill and instead draft legislation and a comprehensive action plan that cannot be misused to violate citizens' fundamental rights. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Karachi is grappling with the consequences of soaring petrol prices, leaving many citizens struggling to make ends meet. The latest hike has not only increased transportation costs, but has also put immense pressure on daily wage earners, a report. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed anger towards an unprecedented and soaring hike in petrol prices. Rickshaw drivers are particularly hard hit as they struggle to balance higher fuel cost with customer affordability. Many are forced to raise their fares, but numerous passengers are unwilling or unable to pay the increased rates. This has led to a significant drop in daily earnings, leaving drivers and their families in a precarious situation. Local vendors and shopkeepers are facing escalating costs for goods and supplies as transportation has become more expensive. This means that prices for food and other essentials are rising, further straining household budgets. Families are finding it difficult to cover basic needs and many are forced to cut back on necessities. As the economic pressure mount, residents are increasingly voicing their frustrations, with many calling for government intervention to provide relief. With everyday life becoming more challenging, the rising cost of petrol is a stark reminder of the economic difficulties facing many in Karachi. The Iran Human Rights Organization has announced in its latest report that Iran has executed at least 166 people in October alone, including 13 Afghan citizens. This figure represents the highest number of executions in a single month in the past two decades. The organization stated that the Iranian government has intensified its execution practices amid rising tensions with Israel and in the context of war propaganda targeting both Iranian and Afghan citizens. According to the report, among the 166 individuals executed in October, there were 13 Afghan citizens, six women and one Iranian German national. The dramatic increase in executions in Iran highlights the urgent need for international attention and intervention regarding human rights abuses in the country. Bangladesh Constitutional Reform Commission vowed on Sunday to eliminate elements of fascism from the constitutional to safeguard democracy. In its inaugural press conference, Commission Chairman Ali Riaz stated that their goal is to draft a constitutional that reflects the aspirations of the Bangladeshi people. He explained that under the current constitution, power is overly centralized, giving the Prime Minister extensive authority that could lead to authoritarianism. The imbalance of power is the root of fascism, Riaz was quoted as saying by local media. The nine-member reform commission was established by the interim government led by Mohammad Yunus, a prominent opponent of ousted Premier Sheikh Hasina. The Commission is expected to present its report to the Chief Advisor of the Interim Government within 90 days after gathering input from all relevant parties. 
Yunus had earlier said he inherited a completely broken down system of public administration, which he added needs a comprehensive overhaul to prevent a future return to autocracy. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.